Hello, my name is Cyclones Oz, and tonight we are tracking what will become Tropical Cyclone Kiralee in the Coral Sea. We've got a powerful tropical cyclone in the making out of Tropical Low 05U. I'm going to be breaking down the forecast for this storm because it is expected to belt the Queensland coastline in around four days' time as a powerful, severe tropical cyclone. It's a significant threat to land, and it should be taken very seriously at this time. You can see on the satellite imagery just behind uh, this screen, you can see it's puffing up some very nice convection. It means that this this uh, cyclone is forming quite rapidly. It's looking very healthy on uh, satellite imagery with a lot of thunderstorms around the center, as you can see, blowing up here with a lot of lightning. And it means that this storm is forming very, very nicely. Now, looking at the Bureau of Meteorology's forecast track map for this storm, you can see it doesn't bring it up to cyclone status until 4 p.m. on Tuesday, I believe that is. But then it undergoes rapid intensification, becoming a Category 3 severe tropical cyclone just 24 hours after forming. Now, I do believe that this forecast is probably a little bit out. It's very uncertain that at least the next 24 hours are because we don't actually know exactly where the storm center is. It's quite a very, it's a very difficult forecast to make. Um, but the storm will uh, be heading towards the Queensland coastline over the coming couple of days, albeit very slowly, but it will have a lot of time to make the most of some very favorable conditions for rapid intensification. And there is no doubt that this will become a severe tropical cyclone, at least at some point in its lifespan, is likely to be very strong indeed. So we're gonna take a look at the forecast right now. I'm going to start off things with the wind forecast. We'll take a look at the Bureau of Meteorology's forecast model, the Access G3. You can see as it heads closer to the Queensland coastline, very slowly across Monday and Tuesday, it does intensify. It doesn't intensify too quickly. The rapid intensification starts on Tuesday by the looks of things as per the forecast, and it's becoming a lot clearer about when this storm is going to intensify, where it's going to be tracking, and how it's going to be impacting the Queensland coastline. And those are all details that I'm going to present to you in the next 15 minutes. So stick around to the end to get your detailed evening update but you can see by Tuesday it's definitely up towards a category 2 strength tropical cyclone here and by Tuesday night we're probably looking at a category 3 strength severe tropical cyclone on the Australian scale with winds in the southern side probably approaching 70 knots sustained 10 minutes and this will definitely be delivering a pretty nasty blow to some of the reefs around the Coral Sea, uh, Lihu Reef that sort of area, Marion Reef they'll be receiving some very nasty wind gusts from this tropical cyclone at this point which will be named tropical cyclone Kiralee and this is going to be a very menacing picture on, say, the radar imagery, on satellite imagery um, for the Queensland coastline. A very big tropical cyclone just offshore. It's going to be similar in size to Debbie of 2017, and it'll also be similar in intensity to Cyclone Debbie. Um, and then, yeah, throughout Wednesday, really strengthens. Wednesday night is going to be very interesting. That's when we're going to get a lot more details on exactly when and where this cyclone is going to be making landfall. But it looks like as a powerful Category 4 strength tropical cyclone and strengthening it's going to slam into the Queensland coastline. That's definitely a Category 4 strength tropical cyclone right there, right on top of air. Now, for those of you who've been watching for a couple of days, you'll know that air is the landfall site that I've really honed in uh, for this cyclone. It's been really consistent, and there's been a lot of uh, congruency between other forecast models, which means I can say with a very high degree of confidence that air is very likely to receive the direct hit from this tropical cyclone. And I would say there's probably a 90% chance of this tropical cyclone making land between Townsville and Bowen. So very good certainty there. And if you live between Townsville and Bowen, including those locations and even down towards Proserpine, make sure that you are preparing for a severe tropical cyclone impact because it is more than likely at this time. As this storm makes landfall, it's going to have wind gusts approaching 100 knots. That's 185 to 190 kilometers an hour. Very, very strong wind gusts, especially um, anywhere towards the east of where this cyclone makes landfall or towards the south. So if it landfalls on air, then um, any any location between air and bone will get hammered with these sort of wind gusts. Um, this is the type of stuff that can rip roofs off homes. It's the type of stuff that can turn uh, trees into flying missiles. Um, very, very dangerous wind gusts indeed that we only see in severe tropical cyclones, category fours even. And it will be rivaling Debbie in terms of wind strength and also probably in terms of storm surge as well, which is a factor that I'm going to touch on a little bit later on in the video. Um, and as I've been saying with model consistency and congruency, uh, we're going to take a look at the GFS model right now and then we'll take a look at another forecast model. Uh, this gives us a better idea of what's actually going to be happening with the tropical cyclone because we can see another perspective from another computer model. Um, and the GFS rapidly intensifies the storm in a very similar fashion to how the axis takes it up and then into Queen 
Queensland into a very similar location actually. It's only about 30 kilometers down the coast actually at pretty much exactly the same intensity, a difference of about two millibars. And with this um, kind of consistency about four days out from the um, expected landfall time, that's very, very rare for the Australian region. I think the Bureau of Meteorology is very much overestimating how much uncertainty there is with this system. I don't think they're doing a very good job with warning the public right now regarding how um, uh, likely the scenario is that we see a Category 4 strength cyclone making landfall on or around air and delivering very dangerous cyclone conditions to Townsville and also Bowen and even down towards Hamilton Island and Proserpine as well. So that's something that we'll be watching out for as well. I imagine warnings and watches will be issued over the next 24 to 48 hours. They have to be basically. But if you do live between Townsville and Bowen, make sure you are preparing for a severe tropical cyclone now starting basically tomorrow morning. And also if you live basically anywhere between Innisfail and Mackay, I reckon that's kind of going to be the ground zero for tropical cyclone conditions. I would be preparing for tropical cyclone conditions, full-blown cyclone conditions to occur Wednesday night into Thursday and maybe even into Friday morning for one or two locations. And that also includes places inland towards Glendon, Mount Coolan, Charters Towers and up towards Ravenshoe and Atherton as well. Um, prepare for cyclone conditions. The further north or south you get in those locations, the less likely full-blown cyclone conditions are. In fact, as you get up towards Tully and Innisfail, they're probably only going to be reserved for coastal locations, but if the cyclone does jump north or further south than expected, then um, it's just best to be prepared. Um, in a situation like this because it will be a very powerful tropical cyclone impact. Now in terms of maximum wind gusts from the GFS, I've been talking about how the GFS is typically the low baller in terms of the major forecast models, but they still predict peak wind gusts approaching 80 or 90 knots, so 165 to 170 kilometers an hour. And if you take that at face value, that could still cause some very significant damage to unprepared homes. It will shatter windows, so make sure you've got your cyclone shutters up. It will blow down trees and power poles as well, so so if you've got loose branches in your backyard or a trampoline in the backyard, either cut it down or put it into a safe space because um, it will definitely turn those into flying missiles that would seriously damage your property and could even, in some cases, it could do some serious harm to yourself as well if you're caught in the way of flying debris such as that. Um, but generally speaking, the GFS lowballs by about 30 to 40%. So 40% on top of 80 or 90 knots, you're talking about 130 knot wind gusts here, 260 to 270 kilometers an hour in some uh, spots. Those are some extreme wind gusts and they can cause some catastrophic damage to property. Now, am I saying that that's expected at this case? No, but you should be preparing for some very severe wind gusts. I would not be surprised if places on Hamilton Island or some of the reefs adjacent to the coastline pick up peak wind gusts in excess of 200 kilometers an hour. And if you live in an exposed coastal location, I highly advise that you prepare for wind gusts in excess of 200 kilometers an hour. This is going to be a very dangerous cyclone impact as it crosses the coastline. That's basically for certainty at this time. Now, we'll take a look at the ECMWF model. The ECMWF has been very consistently um, very weak with this tropical cyclone. It still takes it into a landfall between... In fact, the ECMWF has trended about 10 or 15 kilometers further south of both the ECMWF and the GFS model. However, that's just, I guess, a coincidence. I wouldn't put that on the cyclone actually shifting south. But looking at this model forecast right now, you can see it calls for a very weak Category 1 or Category 2 strength cyclone making a landfall on the coast. Now, this is interesting in the sense that this is a different, a completely different perspective to what the GFS and the Access G3 model are um, presenting as well. So there's still the chance that this cyclone completely busts. I would give that a 20% chance at this point. However, there is no point banking on this cyclone busting or diving north up towards Cairns or heading south towards Bundaberg. Um, I reckon that this is going to come ashore as a very powerful cyclone. That's in line with all major forecast models and also the Bureau of Meteorology as well. If you extrapolate their forecast on METI, you can see that they bring it ashore as a Category 3 strength severe tropical cyclone um, around air. In fact, right over the top of air. So they're still expecting a very powerful tropical cyclone to move through. Um, and yeah, it will be rapidly intensifying right up towards basically it gets upon to the coastline and then it will start to weaken off uh, there. But yeah, after it moves inland it, or after it crosses the coast, it will then move inland across communities such as Charters Towers and then into Matabara, south of Huandon. And then it will start to turn towards further inland communities 
communities such as Longreach and Emerald still as a traceable tropical low um, as it moves down the Queensland coastline and then it looks like it re-emerges and this has been a very consistent trend with the Access G3 model the Bureau of Meteorology's forecast it re-emerges off the coast of sort of around Noosa on the Sunshine Coast as a Category 1 strength at least uh, tropical cyclone in fact that might even tickle Category 2 status at that point it will definitely be turning extra tropical at this stage as per this forecast but it moves offshore and then dives down towards New Zealand so that's a very interesting forecast there and it's a forecast as well that will dump a lot of rainfall onto the Gold Coast and uh, some locations in the Sunshine Coast as well. I believe the GFS is kind of the only outlier to this situation, or actually no, it's not the outlier. It presents a more reasonable forecast where it re-emerges off the coastline and then sort of does a little bit of a loop. The loop is a very weak system and then maybe comes back for round two, but that looks, that's a very erratic track, so I wouldn't be putting money on that whatsoever. That's a very weird track to have, but it will definitely be drenching the Queensland coastline right down towards Byron Bay and Grafton and Lismore um, if that was to materialize but one thing's for sure we're expecting a lot of rainfall down in southeastern Queensland as well but on the good news uh, front it's a lot less than we're, what we have been expecting over the past two days and I'll get to that in just a couple of minutes but we're just going to take a look at rainfall up north briefly uh, where the cyclone is going to be making landfall so around Townsville and Air, where the initial landfall is going to be you've, you're sort of getting your typical textbook cyclone amount of three to four hundred millimeters which will fall in about six hours so very torrential and heavy rainfall but nothing that's going to be like world ending or would bulldoze a town in terms of flooding but still if you live in an area prone to flash flooding or even riverine flooding as well um, expect rivers to jump up to the moderate or even major flood alerts in some areas around Air, Townsville and Charters Towers. Make sure you're preparing for that flooding situation by getting your sandbags ready, getting your cyclone emergency kits ready and being prepared to be cut off for an extended period of time. However, the worst of the rainfall is going to be south of where the storm makes landfall in those inflow bands of this cyclone where we get these rain showers that are just driven ashore. From about Tuesday onwards, Tuesday or Wednesday morning onwards, we're going to see these very heavy showers be driven ashore from this tropical cyclone now persist as the cyclone moves south until about Friday or Saturday when it's well clear of its initial landfall site and definitely well below tropical cyclone status it's just going to be constant non-stop rain now this sort of rain is a lot more unpredictable because it only takes one or two rain showers to really um, tip the tally in another location's uh, favour, but you're looking at some areas picking up up to 800 millimetres through here, which is about two to 300 millimetres and what we were expecting this morning. Outside of Yalbaru, you're looking at 830 millimetres in one or two places. Halliday Bay, you're probably at about 500 millimetres. Marion, maybe 500 as well. Mackay should get at least 200, but this rainfall is going to be very heavy and also very concentrated um, along the hills and the mountains along the uh, coastline here around Mackay and up towards Proserpine. So it will be isolated very heavy totals but it will definitely also come in widespread totals above 400 millimeters for a lot of these locations through here so this is a very good forecast um, from the access g3 model and i do believe that this is going to materialize in it in its entire in wow in its entirety as uh, the forecast has just said here so very heavy rainfall totals expected here a substantial amount of flooding is also very possible um, if this is to materialize so if you do live in a flood prone area make sure you are preparing for flooding um, from a about Wednesday evening onwards as this rain starts to come ashore. And inland communities as well around Huandon could also pick up up to around 300 millimetres down towards Matabara as well, maybe two or 300 millimetres. So these farming communities, they should definitely have their dams filled. Some of their rivers will also flow and maybe even one or two will flood as well up towards some moderate or major flood levels. So make sure you're watching the Bureau of Meteorology's flood warnings and watches and also their uh, weather updates as well because they'll be giving you the latest details on what this cyclone is doing and how much rainfall it's going to drop. Um, down the coastline on the Sunshine Coast as well, south of Gladstone, down towards Bundaberg, one or two places picking up up to 500 millimetres and then down towards the Sunshine Coast as well, very widespread totals above two to 300 millimetres and this will be torrential rainfall as well in the sense that it will happen over a three or four hour period. It'll happen very quickly as this storm moves through. We're no longer expecting it to stall offshore from the Gold Coast. However, again, this is seven days out so the forecast is not clear for this part of the world um, we're gonna need to wait till maybe about Wednesday or Thursday to get a lot more details on what's expected here um, which is unfortunate because I'd love to give a really detailed forecast on the rainfall situation down here but all I can say right now is expect up to four to five hundred millimeters by around January 28th or 29th maybe even into the 30th and the 31st as well but I can't be saying anything for certain at this time which uh, kind of pains me because I know a lot of my viewers are down here 
and I'd really love to give you the detailed forecast, but I promise if you stay subscribed to the channel by around Wednesday and Thursday, we'll know a lot more, and I'll be giving you your detailed forecast then. So yeah, a lot of rainfall is expected across southeastern Queensland as well from this tropical cyclone. Another threat that seems to be overlooked time and time again is the threat of storm surge. Now, I got it wrong this morning when I said, I believe it was uh, six metres of storm surge, and yeah, I'm, um, I'm wrong in the sense that six metres of storm surge is extreme, and it would cause devastating uh, flooding through a lot of the coastal areas here, but I would still be expecting four metres of storm surge above the highest astronomical tide. This is a very powerful tropical cyclone coming in here, and locations between Cardwell down towards Proserpine, including Hamilton Island, and Mackay, or down towards Mackay actually, they should be preparing for a storm surge three to four metres above the highest astronomical tide, and especially locations between Eyre and Bowen. You're looking at the absolute worst case scenario in terms of big storm surge, um, and if high tide, I believe it's around eight or 9 a.m. local time on Wednesday, um, you're going to get that along with a cyclone's landfall. So it's going to be a worst case scenario in that sense. Very huge coastal inundation is expected. That's basically all I can say at this point. So make sure you are preparing if you live in an area that is prone to coastal flooding from the highest astronomical tide and also from tropical cyclones. In short, if you're flooded during Cyclone Debbie, you're going to be flooded in this situation as well. This is a very similar cyclone to Tropical Cyclone Debbie. It's going to be making a landfall at a very similar intensity at this point as per the forecast, and it's going to be very similar in the terms of the amount of rainfall that it's expected to bring, and also the in terms of the amount of storm surge that it could be expected to bring, and also in its effects across southeastern Queensland as well. A lot of rainfall expected down there, one or two places might pick up 500 millimetres in a very similar fashion to how Cyclone Debbie dumped the rainfall down there as well. So if you want a storm to go off, think about Cyclone Debbie. If you were impacted by Cyclone Debbie and you received an absolute belting or, your, um, or a branch fell onto your roof or you got flooded in, then it's more than likely that the same thing is going to be repeated now. So make sure you are preparing um, as you would have for Cyclone Debbie had you have known how bad she was going to be because Kiralee is going to be a devastating system, that's for sure. In one or two locations, it could be a really, really dangerous storm. Expect a Category 3 landfall at this point. It's likely going to be a severe tropical cyclone as it crosses the coast and there's nothing ruling it out becoming a Category 5 and landfalling as a Category 4 strength severe tropical cyclone either. But anyway, I'm starting to waffle here. Thank you so much for watching the video to this point. If you are brand new here, please do consider subscribing and also leave a like on the video while you're at it. But that's all for me, and I'll catch you on the next storm. Goodbye.